This video is going to explain what religion is, how you can get it, and how you can use it to include building shrines, crafting items, bubbles, and avatars. This content is geared towards newer players or players that are looking for a better understanding of all that religion has to offer. It's also going to update and condense my previous videos on the subject. Hope you find it useful. Enjoy. I had been traveling for days, in a desert that had no end. Finally, I broke, succumbing to the scorching heat. The first thing to understand about religion is that it's not a mandatory part of the game. Whether you're playing single player or PvP, religion is completely optional. With that being said, there are many benefits to be had if you utilize it. Your first chance to pick a religion is during the character creation screen. You have the option of selecting one of the available gods to worship. There are four things you should know. One, each god grants access to different benefits to include weapons, armor, placeable structures, and god types. Also, each one has a unique progression path. Two, you can actually learn every available religion. You can only select one religion during this character creation process, but once you're in game, you can travel to religious teachers, which will teach you the other religions for free. Three, not all religions are listed on this screen. There is a religion, and may eventually be more, that you can only learn by completing a series of steps once you're in-game. 4. Krom does not offer any in-game benefits or items that we know of, so you may want to choose a different god. However, if you are a completionist, you may want to select Krom for the fact that you can't learn this religion once you're in-game. Suddenly, a shadow appeared. I looked up. It was a strange face, but a kind one. He told me to follow him. With little choice, I obeyed. What my eyes saw next, I couldn't believe. You can learn Yogg from Nunu the Cannibal at Shaman's Rise. His camp is just northwest of the Shattered Bridge, which is near New River. Stay your hand, stranger. Come, look into the pit. The Lord of Empty Abodes awaits therein. You can learn Set from Metcomosis at Metcomosis' Spire. If you're having trouble finding this spot, find the Grasslands. It's the place with elephants and rhinos. No closer, exile, lest I blast your feeble skin from your bones. I am Mechamosis of the Black Ring. In another place and time, I would command your obeisance. You can learn Daketo from Yakira, priestess of Daketo, at Pagoda of Boundless Lusts. She's located just south of the Celestial Plaza in the jungle. The twin serpents whisper, and a stranger approaches. Call me Priestess. You can learn Mitra from Muriela the Artisan at Muriela's Hope. Once you find the oasis, she's hard to miss. Blessings of Mitra upon you, Pilgrim. Are you come to this land to seek atonement for the sins of your past life? There may be some confusion regarding the Mitra Trainer if you're an older player, or if you find outdated information. Originally, the trainer was Jamila the Pirate Queen at Pariah's Overwatch. Instead of teaching you a religion, she now teaches you an emote. Watch a shadow, Cully. You've not the saltwater stagger of the regular fools. You can learn Ymir from the Outcast at the Outcast Camp. Head to Skyfall Ridge and look for the ice shards. There's an easy path, but it blends in with the snow. Just keep your eyes peeled. By the gods of ice and snow, a new dream approaches. Jebel Sag is the most challenging religion to learn. You first have to travel west of the oasis and speak with the Ware Hyena, child of Jebel Sag. Come, come to me. You have nothing to fear of me, human. He will teach you how to craft the Potion of Midnight. You can craft this at a fireball cauldron or purchase it directly from him in exchange for some feral flesh. To make the potion, you need a water-filled glass flask, blood, bone meal, and yellow lotus powder. Once it's crafted, use the potion and you'll automatically teleport to the Midnight Grove. Warning, this place is very challenging for a low level character. If you think you're ready for the challenge, then make your way along the path. You'll encounter many enemies and bosses. This video won't go into detail about the Midnight Grove, but every time you see the symbol, you have to pass through and defeat a boss in order to progress. 
There will be several bosses along the way until you come to the final boss, a werewolf named NPC. Defeat him and then skin his body. You'll gain the flesh of remembrance. Eat it and you'll learn the religion, Jibble Sag. Water, and plenty of it. Drink, he said. Mitra shines his light on you. Later, I gladly accepted his invitation to stay. You can build a shrine for every religion, and each shrine has three tiers. To upgrade to the next tier, you'll need a certain number of Manifest of Zeals, but the way you acquire them is unique for each religion. Let's start with Mitra. Head over to Feats and select the Religion tab. You'll see all the shrines available to you. If you don't know a religion already, then it will cost you 50 points to purchase it, which is a complete waste of points. Instead, just go learn the religion at the locations I showed you earlier. Craft the shrine and place it. Realize that shrines have a special no build zone surrounding it, meaning you can't place other shrines within a certain distance. You need a minimum of 7 squares space between each shrine. There's two ways you can acquire Manifest of Zeals. The first is by crafting an item, any item. If we craft Ambrosia, for example, we get the Ambrosia plus a Zeal. The second is by crafting an offering. The offering does not give you any items, just a Manifest of Zeal. The key ingredients to all these items is the Lingering Essence. This item is unique to Mitra and can only be collected by first crafting and then using the Mitrian Auk. You'll have to use it on a dead corpse, so go kill some locals and then harvest a lingering essence from their bodies. This process is the same for every religion. Build the unique tool, harvest corpses, collect the unique item, and then craft items at the shrine. For Yog, craft a Yog cleaver and harvest unblemished human meat. For Set, craft a Setite ritual knife and harvest a human heart. For Ymir, craft a Hoar Frost hatchet and harvest ice shards. For Durketo, craft Durketo's Kiss and harvest a sliver of the unfulfilled. For Jebel Sag, craft the Blood Letter and harvest sacred blood. But evil has a way of finding good men, even in the desert. A scoundrel appeared. What's up, nerds? He tried to burn the temple down, but instead only succeeded in lighting a fire in the heart of the priest. Each religion has a special item in addition to the shrines that can only be unlocked at level 60, and they include a weapon and a blessed tool. The blessed tool is basically just a more durable version of the base tool. Side note, any item with the hollowed perk reduces corruption gain. With Ymir, you'd expect to be able to craft armor that gives you protection from the cold, but it's the opposite. It gives you heat protection. In fact, the one-handed axe, Glacier Crack, gives you additional heat protection. The higher tier axe, Foe Shatter, does more damage, but lacks the Frozen Aura buff. All the armor is light, and it combines for a total armor rating of 40. You can make a statue of Ymir, which is purely a decorative piece. You can make ice, which is used in recipes and will also cool you down when consumed. You can make black ice, which is used in tier 3 building construction. With set, you get another armor set and a couple weapons. Now, if you decide to wear this armor, you must fully commit because you've got to pierce some nips. So if you're cool with that, put it on. The armor is light and it gives you slight heat protection with a low armor rating of 36. You can make a set tight shield, which raises your total armor rating to 41. There's a one-handed Kopesh to complement the shield and a higher damage dagger, the snake bite. The helmet is the best thing about this gear set because it also functions as a sandstorm mask and a gas mask. With no steel requirement, this is a cheaper alternative to the formal sandstorm mask. For placeables, you've got a brazier and a snake idol. I thought the snake idol would be a lot bigger. Maybe the most important set items are the snake arrows and antidote. The snake arrows inflict poison, and as you guessed it, the antidote cures poison. Both of these items are cheap to make. With Mitra, you have a couple basic light clothing options, which gives you a minimum heat protection for a total armor rating of 24. You can craft a one-handed Phoenix Engraved Sword and a higher damage spear. There are two placeables, the Statue of Refreshment, which serves as a well, and a Statue of Guidance, which gives off some light. The only consumable is Ambrosia, which regenerates health. 
Yogg has the only functional shrine in the game. You can actually die in the fire. So, if literally sacrificing slaves and fire to a giant octopus god is your thing, then this is for you. You can build three different weapons, a throwable bone spear, which is retrievable, a one-handed Yagite cudgel, and a higher damaged mace called the tenderizer. There is only one armor piece, a Yagite watcher mask, which gives minimal heat protection and a total of eight armor. You can build a skeletal decoration, which while sounding cool is underwhelming. Purified flesh is the only consumable you can craft. It regenerates health and quenches your thirst. With Jebel Sag, you can roleplay as Wolverine or Vega from Street Fighter. It's a high damage, fast attack weapon. You can build a number of lures and they function as you'd expect them to. Throw a feline lure on the ground near felines and they'll come to it. They will only come if you're in an area where they actually spawn, so they are not entirely useful. You can make two potions, one that increases your accuracy by 8 points and one that gives you night vision. The single armor piece is a headdress that has no environmental bonuses for a total of 6 armor. Unique to this religion is a sign of Jebel Sag. This is a temporary, placeable rune that when animals step on it can have several different outcomes. If an animal is not worthy, it disappears. However, if an animal is worthy, in this case a snake, it spawns a werewolf, which will immediately proceed to lunge at your throat. Once you kill it, you can skin it for Shade Bloom. Shade Bloom is used in many important food recipes as well as an ingredient for the claws of Jebel Sag. This method isn't very efficient for farming Shade Bloom, since the cost to craft the sign is fairly expensive. A better method for farming Shade Bloom is to teleport to the Midnight Grove and collect it there. Occasionally a white wolf will spawn. This creature is also hostile but does not give you any Shade Bloom when skinned. The final religion, Dorketo, allows you to transmute materials into various basic ingredients. You can make honey, bread, aloe, compost, and blood, which are needed for many potion, elixir, and food recipes. The armor set gives you the highest armor value out of all the religions for a total of 63 and gives medium heat protection. The single weapon is a high damage, one-handed sword, and the elixir of freedom increases your stamina by 20 points. You should have seen those roleplay nerds. I taught them a lesson. <laughs> Death came for the scoundrel and his men that day. There are three levels of priest thralls. Priest, High Priest, and Archpriest. There are also T4 named priest thralls, but they function the same as a T3 priest. If you've thought about slaving a priest thrall to work your shrine, then don't bother. They do not reduce crafting costs at all. The only two thralls worth enslaving are the T3 and T4, since they are used to unlock the major religious functions on the T3 shrine. Eventually, you'll have enough seals to upgrade to the tier 2 shrine. Once upgraded, you'll have access to new craftables plus the original ones. Again, you'll need to collect more lingering essences, learn the tier 3 version of the shrine, gather the additional materials, and upgrade the shrine. A word of caution when you upgrade, a giant spotlight will shine from your tier 3 shrine into the sky for all to see. It will also become visible on the world map. Everyone will know that you've built a tier 3 shrine, so if you're ready for the attention, then go for it. This new shrine will have more items for you to craft, plus all the previous items. But the major factor here is the ability to build a bubble, in this case called Mitra's Protection, and a god token, called here the true name of Mitra. The only catch is that you need one of the rarest thrall spawns in the game, an Archpriest. This video won't do an exhaustive list of Archpriest spawns, but I'll just show one spawn location for each of the religion's Archpriests. Keep in mind that on official servers, thralls respawn every 16 minutes. You can find a Mitra Archpriest at Sinner's Refuge just north of New River and south of the Summoning Place. Make your way to the back of the cave and the priests will be standing by a shrine. Head to the Cursed Way to find a Yogg Archpriest. This spot is located on top of a small mountain, west of the summoning place, and directly adjacent to the Tower of Bats. Make your way to Sepper Meru to find a set Archpriest. The city is on the far west side of the map, and the priest can be found just to the right of this gate. Up north, you can find a Ymir Archpriest at the Ward Towers. The towers are located between New Azagarth and the Mounds of the Dead. 
and the priest is just along this main path. In the jungle, near the Derketo Trainer at the Pagoda of Boundless Lust, you'll find a Derketo Priest. The priest is slightly tucked away behind some rocks and near the cliff edge. Finally, a Jebel Sag Archpriest is dancing near a bonfire at the den. You'll know you're in the den when you start seeing large were hyenas. It is located just north of the oasis. So now that you have an Archpriest, place it into the Thrall slot in the Shrine. The Bubble and God token should now be available to you. Let's craft the Bubble first. It takes a long time to build, so plan ahead. The Bubble is literally a giant bubble encircling your Shrine. It has a radius of at least 7 squares, and lasts for 36 hours. It's great because it blocks all projectiles, orbs, arrows, and thrown weapons. It does not block enemies from passing through it. Once inside, it will continue to block projectiles. It even blocks trebuchets. However, it won't block explosives. Explosives outside the bubble will still damage inside the bubble. But here's the big question. Does it block avatars? The bubble will prevent someone from summoning an avatar close to the shrine and it's a pretty significant distance away. But even with the increased distance, an unprotected shrine should be an easy target for an avatar, right? Wrong. The bubble automatically inflicts damage to the avatar as soon as it's in range. Each lightning strike removes a good chunk of the available time. I couldn't even make it within striking distance before this avatar was destroyed. With enough Manifest of Zeals, you can craft a god token. Just like the bubble, it takes a very long time to craft. Unlike the bubble, this will destroy your Archpriest and your Shrine. That's right, you will have to find an Archpriest and build a Tier 3 Shrine all over again. There's more to consider here. Remember how your Tier 3 Shrine was visible on the map for everyone to see? When you craft a token, your movement will also be shown on the map. So, if an enemy clan is carefully monitoring the map, they may notice a token moving in the direction. If they attack and kill your character before you finish using the token, then it will be lost. The final caveat with the tokens is that it only lasts for 48 hours. You can't place it in a preservation box to make it last longer, but you can give it to somebody else or store it in a chest. To use your avatar, all you have to do is activate the token. The controls are similar to your actual character's movement. You'll have 60 seconds to cause as much damage as possible, so don't mess around. Every avatar is powerful, but some are better suited for different situations. Justice from a god. Set moves fast, is easy to control, can strafe, and attacks rapidly. However, Set is the shortest avatar and has a small, concentrated attack. Yogg can fly and is effective at hitting targets on the ground and up high, and has a wide area of attack. However, Yogg has a slow attack and slow movement speed. Mitra has decent mobility, a powerful foot stomp, and can hit low to medium targets. However, Mitra moves very slow, attacks slow, and it can be hard to judge where the foot stomp will land. Ymir has a powerful axe attack, 
a long range and can hit targets from ground to eye level. However, Ymir moves very slow, attacks slow, and it is difficult to line up the axe attack. Darketo has two attacks, one that causes damage and one that heals, a wide attack range, and is effective at killing soft targets such as pets and thralls. However, Darketo causes underwhelming damage to buildings and cannot hit targets that are eye level or above. Jebel Sag can fly, moves fast, is easy to control, and has a wide sweeping attack. However, it is hard to tell if the attack is actually hitting the target and the avatar does not cause passive damage by flying over structures. That wraps up this video on religion and Conan Exiles. If you'd like me to go into more detail about specific areas, then let me know. Also, if there's any other topics you'd like to see, then let me know as well. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.